We've come to the last few AWS services that we're going to talk about in the Foundation series, three of them to be exact, CloudFront, CloudFormation, and Elastic Beanstalk. Let's start off with CloudFront. CloudFront is a super powerful and yet amazingly simple uh, content delivery network, or CDN. Now, what a content delivery network is, is a way of getting your website content distributed around the world so that people get really low latency access to it. So, uh, you know, for instance, let, let me just give you an example. Uh, we've got our origin server that's hosting the website. Amazon has all kinds of edge locations, which is what this leverages. Now, hang on, let's remind ourselves of where that is. Remember, Amazon's global infrastructure page, the yellow spots are regions, the blue spots are the edge locations. And if you want a specific list of them, they're down here and you can see, ding, ding, this is Amazon CloudFront and distributed DNS gets sent over here. So I've got my origin server, which maybe is hosting a, you know, a photo website, right? Where people upload uh, photos. And let's just say somebody posts a photo there of, of the president of the United States shaking a dog's hand. And everybody's like, oh, that's so funny. You know, let's, let's, you know, forward that in emails around the world. It's the president shaking a dog's hand. Well, as, at, you know, initially uh, your one server uh, which, which, hang on, let me, before I even, even go there, this server could be anything. It could be an EC2 instance running in AWS, or it could be a server that you're running from your, ho your house, or it could be, I mean, it could be um, maybe you sign up for a bluehost.com account, you know, one of those shared providers where you pay five bucks a month to host a website or something like that. It could be, could be anything. It's not limited to just uh, AWS resources. So I've got this picture of the president, and I sign up for CloudFront, and it starts distributing as it's access that picture, that static content, to all of these different edge locations, which that means when somebody in Madrid, Spain, looks at this picture of the president, it goes from my origin server here down to Madrid, Spain, and now all of the users in Madrid access that picture right from there. So they get really low latency uh, uh, access to this, a really fast response time, and, and uh, your server over here doesn't get slammed. The server, the origin server, just has to send it one time out to all the edge locations as it's being requested, and then the edge locations handle the load. Now, the billing for this is just like anything. They just bill on the, the traffic that you use. Uh, since the content is temporary, it's cached, you can specify a time to live. Uh, you don't, you're not really charged, if you will, for storage space. You're just charged for uh, bandwidth, uh, pay per gigabyte of transfer out of each each edge location. Is that is this... Does it make sense? I mean, and it's. Can I tell you just how simple you're going to be amazed at how simple it is to set this up? Um, hey, and before I get there, uh, this caches static content. Uh, if I would, uh, you know, if you're interested in this, I, I am. It's it's an interesting topic. Go to Google and uh, type in CloudFront. Uh, let's see, what would be a good search? Performance metrics or uh, uh, performance comparison or, or something like that. B people have actually done this to where they will uh, create a website with a whole bunch of photos on it and then distribute it to the edge locations. And then they'll say, okay, well, you know, if I'm, let's say, sitting over here somewhere and I run the test and I go to my origin server, it actually takes and they, sh they, they do, uh, there's, there's tools where you can do this. There's open source tools. You know, it takes, you know, we'll say 6.5 seconds for the entire website to load with all the images and all that. But when you distribute this to the edge location, I mean, just see the uh, time to load just plummet because uh, they're able to do it so much faster. It's cached, you know, right down the street, if you will, at one of these edge locations. Dynamic website information is proxied. So, you know, maybe you have a dynamically generated page. You can still distribute that through the edge location. Uh, and it acts as a proxy because it's dynamic. Obviously, there's no sense in caching website information that's going to change every other second. Uh, however, that does allow you to have that single point of contact for your server. Again, uh, limiting the load on the server. You don't have all of these people coming to your server, getting their dynamic content. You know, you have to, I mean, there's a lot of overhead associated with each one of those sessions. You have to maintain state information and uh, keep TCP sessions alive. And I mean, there's a lot more than just, here's your stuff uh, coming from the web server. So the edge locations can alleviate that load from your server. So what I was saying is, you, I mean, it's amazingly simple because here's the process to set it up. You create a CloudFront distribution. Now, that sounds 
scary and technical, but really that's just the link that you click on the AWS website. You go CloudFront, new distribution. And it says, okay, well, you know, we'll go ahead and name this distribution and then link it to your resources. So you, let, let's say we've got this uh, distro that we're creating. And we say, well, actually my, my website is hosted at, you know, Bluehost. Uh, dot com. You wouldn't actually type Bluehost. You would put your name there. Let's say uh, CBT Nuggets dot, dot uh, com. I'll just put com uh, right there. Uh, so I link it to the actual web server, and this generates a CloudFront URL. And it's going to be you know one of those lovely cryptic you know xj five nine six two blah, 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 dot CloudFront dot com or something like that. So this will be the URL that you use uh, and you link to using a uh, DNS name, a DNS C name. That's uh, an alias record uh, that points to here. So so that way you don't have to say hey come to my website. It's at xj five nine. You just say, hey, come to my website at cbtnuggets.com, uh, which is actually just an alias, which points to this, and that allows them to access all of those edge locations through the CloudFront service. That's it. Once, once you do that, you're now distributed around the world. Now let's get into CloudFormation and Elastic Beanstalk. <laughs> you know you work for a dot-com company when you can name something Elastic Beanstalk, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's a good name. It's cool. Uh, so these are two services that have the same goal, and that's to make it really easy to provision resources on Amazon Web Services. Think of it this way. Uh, imagine that if you're if you're like me, uh, you go grocery shopping once a week. I have I have four kids, so they eat a lot. Uh, we go to the grocery store, and we always get the same stuff, right? You know, you go down the aisle, get the pickles, get the bread, get the milk, lots and lots of milk, uh, and so you just you kind of get the same stuff. Well, imagine if there was a supermarket service. Maybe maybe there is, where you could you know say this is my template order. You know, hit the button, and you just show up at the door, and they say, here's your shopping cart, sir. You go, thanks. You know, you just kind of drive off. You've already paid for it with your credit card and all that. That's 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 the idea of cloud formation and elastic beanstalk. It, like as as you, uh, I'll say, you know, using the analogy, shop more at Amazon Web Service, the more and more it feels like home. To more, it's just like, okay, we've got a new deployment. Let's get our standard load balancer, you know, elastic load balancer. Let's get some elastic IPs. Need to set this up in VPC. We're going to need three EC2 instances. You know, you, you kind of get used to shopping, if you will, for your standard template to do whatever it is that your company does. So what you can do, and I'll, I'll say two different ways, is one, from the cloud formation side of things, you can start putting together your own templates. Meaning, I can say, you know what, for, we've, we've done this, maybe, you, you, let, let me just come up with a scenario. Your company hosts websites or, or hosts server farms for organizations, and, you know, you kind of do this template where uh, a, a company signs up for, with you for your, uh, we'll call it the essentials uh, package. And I'm coming up with this on the fly, so if it blows up, hang with me. You know, your essentials package, so when a company comes to your organization, you say, okay, uh, for fifty nine ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine, you get uh, two servers in the cloud with these specifications. You're going to get load balancing and redundancy and failover. I mean, nobody has to know you're really doing this all through Amazon Web Service. I mean, that's what you are as a value-added reseller, essentially, is somebody who can put all these solutions together, right? So you, you kind of create this little package, including DNS, including blah, 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 blah all the other stuff that, that Amazon Web Services have. So you create, you create your own little cloud formation essentials uh, template, Right, because you you know exactly what that that customer is going to get. So instead of going every time you get a new customer signing up, you manually go through and set up two EC2 instances. You manually go in and set up an Elastic load balancer and assign Elastic IPs. And I mean, instead you just use your standard Essentials template, which boom provisions all of those resources right there. Right, it's the shopping cart sitting at the at the store for you already with all your groceries in it. So that's what cloud formation is. I say it's geared to don't don't hold me to this. It's just something that I I see it as is it's geared more towards system administrators, uh, somebody who does all the server provisioning and all that. D not saying developers can't use it, but you go in and create templates. As a matter of fact, let me let me even bring it up right here. Uh, so right here, cloud. What? what oop. Cloud, too many cloud named items. Uh, cloud formation. There we go. Um, it even comes. Let me just get, uh, create stack. It even comes with many, many different templates. You know, we've got uh, these are pre-built templates from um, uh, Amazon to where they've got single instance samples, samples using a relational database. You know, scroll down, and you see multi availability zones. So you can say, I want a Joomla content management system. And what they've done is put together a template that that does this and kind of builds it from there. Or you can upload a, upload a template file. Now these are things that you put together in JSON. Uh, that's that's the 
scripting language, if you will, that you use. Uh, or somebody might have a URL that has that JSON template on there. And you can point to it, uh, but you can essentially upload that essentials template or point to it on, on your website and boom, it provisions all of the resources behind the scenes for you. Now, Elastic Beanstalk is one that is geared more towards developers, people that code web applications. These are just a couple examples. Maybe I'm a PHP developer or a Python developer, you know, and so, or maybe you're a .NET developer and you uh, host things on IIS, right? So what the, what Amazon's goal is that y you're a developer, right? You don't you don't really want to concern yourself with a whole ton of Amazon technology. Well, uh, hang on, let me let me back up. Maybe you don't know the in and outs of Amazon, but you really want to make a really scalable application. Let, let me just come up with a scenario. <laughs> Let's go back to our grocery store, right? So you're a .NET developer and you uh, you have created a web application to help people shop from home and then they can just go pick up the bag, right? I'm going back to what I was saying. So they can go to the grocery store and pick it up. So you create this pretty brilliant .NET application uh, where people can just kind of drag and drop groceries, you know, put the pickles in your cart. You got the little image of the cart on online and all that kind of stuff. So they put all the stuff in the cart and that's what's going to be sitting for them at the grocery store when they get there and you know, already already all set up. So, so you create this brilliant .NET application but you don't know all that much about EC2 instances or uh, elastic load balancers or uh, auto scaling groups to where you can grow your infrastructure as the demand for your shopping application becomes more, right? So what you can do is just come straight to Amazon's website, uh, go to sh right here, Elastic Beanstalk and say, okay, uh, I am, I am a... Um, IIS 8 developer, right? And notice it's got little like Windows Server, Windows Server 2012. So I am an IIS 8 developer. Uh, what do I do? And Amazon actually goes far further than what do I do? They're like, actually, we'll tell you what you do. Uh, you can go ahead and vroom, have this brilliant infrastructure based on a cloud formation template that we've created for uh, IIS 8 developers. And, uh, you know, you can expand this uh, expand this down. Oh, There's my, my previous environment. So right here, um, they're going to start uh, building. Let's see if we can click on events. There we go. Uh, building, like right now it says, okay, I'm building an S3 storage bucket for you. Then you're going to watch it. Matter of fact, I... I did one of these beforehand just because it takes a while to build. But take a look at this. I, I, this is I just selected an IIS application, so it created a uh, you know uh, scrolling off the screen an auto scaling group. It created cloud watch alarms. It created uh, EC2 instances. It created security groups and ELB load balancers. Uh, it created SNS topics. So so I mean, all of the stuff. I mean I know I know. Hang on. Right now you're like it. I know we're in the foundations. A, a series right now, right? So, so I know some of this stuff. You might be like, okay, I remember that. What was that? So, essentially, what it does is take all these AWS pieces. You know, uh, simple notification service, uh, EC2 instances, uh, relational database services. You know, all of uh, S3 buckets, all of this stuff, and says, I'm going to build this brilliant, scalable, auto-scaling uh, environment for your shopping cart application. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from a developer mindset, you don't really even need to. Uh, I, <laughs> I was so excited, I crashed my application. Okay, I I brought it back up. So, so let me let me show you why uh, people get confused when when uh, looking at these two services. Is Elastic Beanstalk really does just based on your environment deploy cloud formation templates that Amazon has created? Matter of fact, let me let me show it to you. You know, we were right here. You can see it's in the middle of creating. I created a load balancer, security group, and all that. But if I come over here uh, to let's let's look at. Um, uh, where are we? Cloud, cloud formation. You can see that it's actually using a template that Amazon has created for an IIS 8 environment. See, it's it's at this create in progress. So people are like, well, well, wait, is Elastic Beanstalk cloud formation? Well, it kind of is. How about we say this? It leverages cloud formation uh, to do what it does. So cloud formation is the engine uh, behind Elastic Beanstalk. Now, uh, one of the nice things is, is Elastic Beanstalk, you know, adds to it because it keeps versioning for your application. Like as you upload different versions of your application, it can say you've got this and you've got that and you can revert back to a previous version. And they even make tools where you can integrate inside of your programming language. So inside of PHP or .NET or whatever uh, to, to tell uh, Elastic Beanstalk uh, other stuff that's beyond the template to provision.
right? I mean, if, if it was just if it was just a CloudFront template, then they wouldn't need a, a separate service for it because you could just choose that CloudFront template from that drop-down menu I showed you on CloudFront. No, this is more. This is allowing you as a developer, as an application uh, programming entity to uh, dictate what resources are created in AWS. So, it was pretty cool, a uh, pretty pretty neat service. So both of these services are, I always put my quotes, free, uh, simply because you're going to pay for the underlying resources that that thing provisions. Okay, last thing I'll mention on CloudFormation and Elastic Beanstalk is it's also nice because let's say you, you have a development lab environment, right? You want to spin up 50 EC2 instances, three databases, nine S3 buckets, you know, auto-scaling groups, Elastic. I mean, so you've got this, this resource blob that you provision with your template. Well, if you, if you then terminate that, that template uh, or, or you're done with it, you don't want to have to go back and delete all of the EC2 instances, delete all of the databases. I mean, because it's going to scatter stuff everywhere. And you're like, oh man, did I remember everything? Because now I'm going to start getting billed for stuff that I've forgotten about because it's it's just part of the template. So when you delete the templates of, of either one of these, it will delete all of the resources associated with it except data. So for instance, if you've got data in the S3 buckets, it's not going to delete the S3 buckets. It, it leaves those there because, you know, and Amazon doesn't know if you've got unique stuff inside of that data. So uh, it's, it's just as easy as, you know, coming in here and hitting that delete. Well, this is cloud formation, delete stack or inside of the Elastic Beanstalk, uh, you can hit delete this application, which wipes out, uh, wipes out everything associated with it. So we have seen. CloudFront, isn't this, I would say, what, what a great way to end the foundation, uh, AWS Foundation series, just with like a, whew, it's like a, uh, actually, today is uh, July 5th, so yesterday was July 4th, it's like, poof, the, the grand finale fireworks display, da -da 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 -da, and just went off, uh, with three cool services, CloudFront, the ability to distribute your website content around the world, and then CloudFormation, Elastic Beanstalk, a way to wing out an entire AWS uh, environment with every resource you need included, all based on a template. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.